Thanks, Kristen. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Winnetka Village Council virtual study session for February 8th, 2022. I'd like to call the meeting to order, ask everybody to mute your electronic devices. Must have left mine downstairs, so. Um, and now it's time for Rob to do a roll call for attendance. Certainly, Trustee Dahlman. Here. Trustee Dearborn. Here. Trustee Mancini. Here. Trustee Kreit. Here. President Ritz. Here. Not okay. President. Not President, yeah. Trustee Apatoff and Trustee Swerk. Right, and both have indicated, at least uh, uh, Rob indicated that he's got something going, probably probably can join us if we're running long here, but, uh, and John Swerk let me know that he wouldn't be available tonight either. So we'll move forward. Okay, uh, public comment. Kristen, do you have any public comment to read us this evening? President Rince, there was no public comment submitted in advance of the meeting this evening. Um, there's no one present in council chambers, um, but I do see we have members of the public attending via the Zoom platform, and we do have a hand raised. Okay, let's just make sure that, that uh, there's an understanding that this is the time of the evening for, for discussion of things that are not on the agenda. <clears throat> Right. So uh, is that uh, Elijah raising his hand? Yes. Okay. Just double check with him. Make sure that uh, he's commenting not on agenda items. And then if that's the case, we'll hear him. If not, he'll join the conversation when we get going. Thank you, President Rents. Elijah, I am asking you to unmute. Okay. Um, I don't have the full agenda. Uh, I just want to hear comments that might come up about the Green Bay Trail. Um, that's the reason I'm, I'm here I, and, and what the status of that is in the village, the park district and with Lakota Group. Sure. Uh, yeah, we don't have any answers for that uh, on that tonight, Elijah, but we will be uh, probably including some conversation on, on uh, where that fits in our agenda planning for the year. Thank you. So, all right, we'll move forward from there. Um, uh, President Rince, we do have one other person in attendance that, that came into the meeting. Um, it, if you would like to speak on an item not on the agenda, Mr. Andrew, would you please raise your hand? No hands raised, President Rince. Okay, so tonight uh, is a general village council discussion discussion regarding policy matters for future agendas. Tonight, Village Council will be reviewing current village initiatives and discussing suggestions for future policy matters for 22 and beyond. Uh, so really what, what, what I've kind of taken as a uh, annual event, I guess you could call it, is uh, number one, to help all help us all understand where we're going this year and what things you'll be seeing popping up on the agenda. And also if there's anything that uh, that's on people's minds and, and they might like to see it become an agenda item, you know, for just uh, a study session conversation and potential policy direction. Uh, you know, in the past, we've always tried to fit in uh, sort of emerging topics if they seem to be uh, time sensitive. Good example was the uh, was the change in the uh, uh, demolition standards for last year. I mean, that was kind of something that came up at the last minute and came through. Uh, actually, Andy, if you remember a few years ago, you were the one that raised the whole issue about uh, uh, the caucus survey and and streamlining government and and. Uh, that whole plan commission thing. And that, that led to a whole conversation that we hadn't even planned to have that year. And it really resulted in a lot of uh, good conversation and action. So that's kind of the, you know, the crux of this whole thing for this evening. So it doesn't have to be long and drawn out. Uh, the other thing that, that mainly for the newer trustees is, 
you know, the reason why we have these study sessions is because a lot of times Rob has policy direction that he's going to need in order to do his job during the year. And most and more importantly, he also needs to hear on items that could affect and inform his preparation of the, uh, the annual budget. So, you know, it took me a long, long time to figure out that's what the whole thing was about. <laughs> so for probably the better part of four years, I, I, I showed up and just kept asking, where are all these things coming from and why are we listening and why are we talking about them? Uh, so I, I know I'm a slow study, but I finally figured out that, you know, this is all knotted together in one way, shape or form. So, uh, you know, and I think those of us have been here a while know that we do a lot of heavy lifting and good work at these study sessions. So that's mainly what my focus is, is how we're going to fill our time with those conversations. Uh, you know, and obviously the uh, comprehensive plan is going to uh, provide village council with a whole nother uh, lengthy list of items that we're going to be needed discussing on policy matters all over the board. So uh, this is kind of the, the quiet before the storm this year, but it really doesn't look that quiet to me because, uh, you know, when you take into account recommendations from the caucus, which we, you know, always like to look at and see if there's something that actually fits into our 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 conversations and you know this year they came up with uh, the undergrounding uh, they also talked about vibrancy in the community and providing more activities and and more opportunities for residents to interact with each other uh, both of which I'm, I'm hoping we can have focused conversations on that uh, undergrounding of the electrical lines is another big one that came up in the caucus survey Personally, I've been talking about it for years, and I think we're to a point now where, as a group, we can talk about this and maybe try to, to lay some groundwork for how we may or may not move forward on that front. The power plant, we talked about it during the budget. It's going to be a, you know, it's going to be multiple study sessions just for us to become quasi experts in power generation and all the various facets of what we need to do to get us through to 2035. And, you know, are we willing to play uh, as a power generator after that? And what does that mean? So that's gonna be uh, multiple conversations this year. Uh, leaf blowers, it's not gonna go away, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, we now have King Poor representing the village as our liaison to the regional group that's been formed to uh, work on possible, you know, actions. Each municipality as a member of this regional task force so that we can get some consistency. Because one of the things we hear about landscapers is, well, Wilmette and Winnetka and Glencoe and Northfield all have different rules. So, you know, this is an opportunity for us to uh, and interestingly enough, we're leading the way in a lot of these conversations. So, uh, and we're fortunate enough that, that, that King is going to go out there and, and uh, be our uh, messenger for a lot of this. And, and, and he's passionate about the subject. So we'll be hearing back from him. And, you know, there, there will probably be an expectation that we provide policy direction on that as well. Uh, and then the comp plan. Uh, I can imagine that consuming a couple nights, wouldn't you think, Rob? I mean, there's a lot there. And uh, I think it's going to take us a while to work through it and actually be able to bring something forth that we can adopt and, and use as our guiding light for the, for, you know, for the coming years. So those are the things I kind of had on my list. Uh, you know, the, there's a lot in that comp plan, and, and Bob, you've chastised me this, chastised me on this before. Maybe not in a negative manner, but just reminding me that we're waiting around for a, a lot of conversations until this comp plan is done. And I agree, it's it's starting to stack up. So we're going to be very busy uh, for certain next year if we do adopt the plan and start working through the myriad of of issues that has. The post office site is coming up and that's going to also bring some some conversations at our level and again policy direction rob needs to hear if that's a 
if there's directions we want to go with that and how much are we intending to spend on it. So a lot of stuff of that nature, but at this point, that's all I have. <laughs> but if that isn't enough for you, we're going to throw the, throw the mic open, the table open and uh, things that might be on your mind. This is a time to get them out there on the table so we can see if we can get them in the pipeline as well. Make sense? Don't everybody talk at once. What's on your mind, guys? This is your chance. I'll start, Chris. Yeah, go ahead. Um, if that's okay. Sure, go ahead. Uh, and, you know, I echo all the topics you mentioned and Rob Apatow's memo, I think, you know, hit the big ones. And it strikes me in this conversation, which I think is really good because maybe something can surface and, you know, maybe move up the priority list. Um, you know, obviously the big infrastructure projects, we all know they're going to happen. We're going to go into Hubbard Woods, the stormwater, you know, one Winnetka, you know, I'd like to see the post office sort of conversation get going. Um, but I guess on my mind would be more man on the street kind of bread and butter issues. Uh, leaf blowers are clearly one of them. Um, I think that the, you know, we've, we've had uh, maybe it's the same resident, but maybe other residents have come about these underground power lines. And I agree, I think we should, you know, at least frame the topic. I mean, let everybody know what, what it costs, you know, what it takes to do this and at least put it out there. And I think maybe we can, if, if we can undergo a study on that, that would, you know, allow a conversation about the pros and cons of it, whether it's even feasible, I think we should do that. Um, but the one that really strikes me here, and Elisha's on the on the call here, is the Green Bay Trail. And I talked to Rob earlier in the week about it as well, just to see kind of where we stand on it. And I think it's probably further along than than I was aware of in terms of conversations between the Park District, uh, maybe friends of the Green Bay Trail. But you know, this is, as we all know, you know, it's it is one of the top assets of the North Shore of our community as well and it needs some work. And we have um, people on the ground, uh, advocacy groups, an advocacy group that Elisha can talk about maybe now or another time he has, um, that can be very helpful on this. It's a, you know, kind of a um, divide and conquer sort of project with different groups, Park District, ourselves, maybe Union Pacific can be involved in some way. Um, obviously Friends of the Green Bay Trail, and I think it's a logistical coordination kind of a project that, you know, someone can frame it. And I, I talked to Elisha about this over the, over the months and so on. I happen to think that Friends of the Green Bay Trail can help frame it, even though we, we might lead the project ultimately. You know, we find out who could, you know, is responsible for whatever and sort of move this along because it is one of these things that we all use. And it's really nice to have you know, tangible, I mean, stormwater is going to be very tangible. I, I get that, but that's so large and, you know, it's hard to really get your arms around it. Obviously, streetscape, we're all used to it now. Um, you know, it's, it's looking great. Um, but I think something like the Green Bay Trail, we should try to really move up the priority list if we can. Uh, it'd be a great project to get community involvement in. You know, maybe there's fundraising, maybe there's grants that can be procured. Um, so that, you know, that is the one that I'd like to see, if possible, you know, kind of get some traction and maybe it's a multi-year endeavor. I don't know, but I think, you know, it's something we could get done. I think people would really appreciate it. Um, so that's, that's the one on my mind. Okay. That one's been on my mind for a while too, Bob. Right. I know it has been. So Kim, I saw you were ready to jump in there too. Yeah, no, um, kind of uh, echoing Bob's sentiment about not large ones, but ones that might be impactful. And I'll be honest, I'm not educated enough to know why this hasn't happened before or if it's feasible in the future, but stepping into penny shoes, I would love to see some sort of comprehensive sidewalk plan for the neighborhoods that don't have sidewalks. I myself don't have one on my side of the street and oftentimes find myself lurching for my two-year-old son to come back from the street and not get hit by a usually a mom in a minivan on the way to Hubbard Woods. But um, in any case, I, I would love to know what 
the feedback has been when Penny's poked around in the subject in the past and if there's a, a way we can prioritize that or start with one neighborhood or one street, et cetera. Rob, didn't uh, Steve Saunders have a, an inventory of, of potential places that we were going to, and I know Penny was always pushing for a review of it or a conversation or maybe even trying to find a way to get some of those into the budget. Uh, I mean, but we have a starting point for that, right? I mean, Steve we, did. We do. We, yeah, we have an inventory. Um, village policy, and, I, and there may be a few gaps, but village policy is to have at least one sidewalk on one side of the street on every street in the village. And um, we have an inventory where the gaps are mm -hmm. and looking to, you know, say which ones would be prioritized. Many times they're around safe routes to school. Um, but then it's, it's a lot of neighborhood engagement. If, one, if there's a recommendation to move one forward where you have to work with neighborhood residents, because um, many times you'll see the plantings out there where there isn't a sidewalk framed and it can be, um, it's doable, but it just takes a little bit to get people to buy in. Um, but we do, Chris, we do have the inventory and I'm sure Jim could refresh that for a discussion at some point. Yeah, I'd love to, you know, just if, if you don't mind, Rob, connecting me with him, just so I could see sure. for my own sake of where, where there are priorities. And I totally understand the sentiment of at least if there's one um, side of the street that has it. And, you know, obviously the preference is towards having none um, first. Um, that'd be great. And then my other comment too, sitting on the EFC, I hear a lot of comments about sustainability and, and climate action. And I know that's a big part of the comp plan that's coming forward. So I would think some sort of, and, and Chris, you, you jumped in on the EFC call last month, which was fantastic and sort of challenged them with coming up with um, actionable items that we could do something with and being an advisory committee instead of an advocacy committee, which I think is a reframe work in their mind of, okay, we can really do stuff to help steer the village council towards um, policies or actions that are meaningful. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm not sure what that would even look like for us in terms of that bucket from the comp plan, but whether it's related to, you know, the food, I know of one, one area that's pretty simple is a food scrap program that um, has been talked about a lot. Could we engage, you know, the, our, one of our um, our public works groups to to focus on that, or solar panel incentives, or or something of that nature? But that's another area I think would be impactful. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, um, and Kristen, remind me of the actual title. But the EFC uh, has been, as you know, working on the climate action plan that ties with the GRC two. Uh, they're presenting. They're scheduled to present that uh, next week. And they'll have some comments that go along with it. There will be probably some intermediate action steps that can be pursued prior to the comp plan being formally adopted with the sustainability section. So, and but in terms of you know food waste composting, we we do have the the two preferred uh, vendors for residential, and we're looking at options with respect to you know, the uh, contractual services that could potentially come on, on, on online for the town. Um, some of those are few and far between, but we're still looking at it and looking to extend our recycling contract here in the next few weeks. Great, cool, thanks. Yeah, and, 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 and I will say that Rob is looking at uh, you know, potential opportunities for uh, uh, food waste in the commercial district too, which is I know is a, hot button for several people on the EFC yeah. and yeah. Uh, that'll be part of a more I think a holistic approach to that too right Rob at least that's your yeah potentially um, we need to engage at least our current provider to find out what service enhancements they're capable of doing but it also gets back to our strategy of eventually moving out of commercial collections and then licensing haulers who can provide a broader array of services than we can with an in-house operation that can't really handle that type of collection. Right. And I know Ben's going to be really creative in thinking about how we work on that whole thing too, right, Ben? <laughs> Will do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love being creative about garbage. <laughs> <laughs> we do it every week here. <laughs> I, let's keep it going, guys. I'm, I'm, we're all ears, and I'm writing them all down. So, uh, first, Ben, I, I don't care what anyone says. Your work isn't garbage. So, <laughs> uh, my uh, big thing 
always there's two of them um and it's in the notes from the last time taxes right and and i know we've got some initiatives in the works um and we've we've kept the line on taxes but i'm continuing to look for opportunities to consolidate um whether operationally or functionally uh, with other bodies in the village and Rob, I know you're all about that. So I don't have to, I don't think it requires a special study session, but I just think it's something that should always be in our tracker. Um, and then the, the next thing, Chris, you already touched on it and we've already got study sessions, I'm sure, I know in the works, um, but the future of the power plant and, and what ECA's power supply. And I think that's um, inextricably linked to uh, the undergrounding issue um and and sort of like you know long-term needs when it comes to power and some of the new legislation that um will affect our our power supply whether it's coal or or otherwise so um don't need to say much more about that i just wanted to say you know i think the big priorities that i see are already on the radar i agree about the green bay trail i also agree about the post office um so yeah and you know on the green bay trail to the extent we can start making any kind of um progress you know even if it's just clearing out buckthorn <laughs> you know just some tangible progress be even before we have like a master plan that might be good yeah i'd like to get some of those these uh as you know randy if you be you run so i'm sure you're down on the trail but near el dorado there on both sides that turns into a swamp during the summer yeah, it always, really it always seemed real simple to me to just dig a couple of trenches across the trail, drop a pipe in them, and let it flow over to the uh, to the lower ditch on the other side of the fence. Yeah, which would be really simple, but <laughs> I could see Rob cringing already. <laughs> you and I could do it on a Saturday afternoon, Andy. I think, but uh... you get a backhoe out there, we'll be fine. <laughs> but no, but, but there are tangible things like that that have been just languishing forever that are probably easy, low hanging fruit that don't get into the whole planning process. So yeah, um, that's a good point. Okay. What are you thinking, Tina? Well, I, I think you guys mentioned all the really good projects. I was just thinking as you were talking about them and the priorities, um, I think the comp plan to really, you know, a lot of times jurisdictions adopt comp plans and they sit on the shelf. I think really understanding how important it will be to really do the hard work of implementing it by changing codes and things, that's, all, that's a heavy lift. Um, but I think that's, you know, if we don't do it within the first two years after adoption, you know, you kind of lose momentum. And so I think we should just keep our eyes on that and have a work plan on that. Cause I think there's going to be some really good stuff in there. Um, and, you know, from things like green energy things like solar, you know, sometimes there's, you need to adopt design standards with the solar panels, right? Um, you know, people don't like them on the front of the house. They only like, you know what I mean? So there's going to be lots of little details in that stuff. The other thing, I like the idea that um, everyone mentioned kind of low hanging fruit that are tangible kind of quicker projects. Um, kind of the ones on my list for a long time has been the crossing at Tower and Hibbard. There's steps and have just witnessed you know, at least a couple times a year, kids struggling trying to get to Skokie or Washburn. I know there's underground utilities. I've talked with, it's been on my list for a long time. I know that's a really tough right away because on the north side of tower, I think there's buried utilities and it's tough to kind of negotiate. But I think, you know, looking at places like that that are inaccessible, they're not ADA compliant either. And I think those things, looking at those areas of town to make them a little bit more pedestrian, bike friendly, easier for kids to negotiate, um, I think would be great. Um, and then on the Green Bay Trail, I, I love the trail, but I also think that 
um, some of that clearing out needs to be done. Again, a quick action project or something like that. Because I think once the visibility gets bad or it gets dark, women tend to not use the trail. So, you know, I'm not going to go there when it's like, 5 a.m. and it's kind of dark. And I think there's a lot of public safety things that we could do to help make it more accessible for a lot more people in the community. So those are just some of the things um, I was thinking of, but I think you guys hit on all the, the top ones. I'm getting the sense we're gonna be talking about the Green Bay Trail this year too, guys. <laughs> uh, it seems like just about everybody's got an appetite for it, so. Uh... Uh, I'll, Rob, we'll just have to, you know, kind of cobble together something that we have ready. And if we have a, a study session that, that opens up for us, we can always bring that to the table and just sure. talk in general terms, you know? Sure. sure. And, and you recall during the budget, we um, allocated funding for the um, more of a conceptual study, you know, address really to address the enhancements to our portion of the trail. Um, and working through that to ensure the park district is participating, not only with their, their staff, but with their financial resources and we're, we both will be sharing in it. Um, but this, this engagement will involve key stakeholders. Um, you mentioned Friends of the Green Bay Trail, the Garden Club, um, users, um, and there'll be opportunities for open houses and engagement to look at what I would see as you know, short, medium, and long-term improvements, those, those low-hanging fruit things that could be done right away, but they're also going to be need, you know, areas that are identified where we can actually do engineering around, uh, whether it's um, accessibility points or, you know, whatever it may be, uh, ADA issues, uh, safety and security. Um, so all those things will be, I'm hoping, flushed out through a robust engagement process with the community, and then we can start to budget around it, chase grants, um, and have our stakeholders actually do some local fundraising for the Winnetka portion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be fun just to do a little visioning as a group and uh, kind of weight this thing with what, what our financial appetite is too. I mean, because let's face it, uh, we have a lot of, we get a lot of stuff on the, on, the, on, on the plate right now. And a lot of these, and that was the other message, Kim, if you remember that I, that I took to the EFC, is bring us vision, but also bring us another checkbook, you know, yeah. help us find those pockets of money out there so that we can, we can marry the two and actually move these things forward. Uh, you know, we're also used to the bootstrapping methodology that, that now we're starting to see reaching, reaching out to uh, other governmental agencies can actually be a pretty, pretty profitable uh, engagement. And, you know, I, I don't think we'll get 30 million for, for Green Bay Trail, but you know, a couple million bucks would go a long way down there. So, yeah. And once you have a plan, at least the concepts of the plan, and something you can put engineering around, then you have something concrete to apply for for grant funding, whether they're Oslet grants or uh, IDNR uh, trail enhancements. I think mean, Chris, you mentioned, um, you know, rails to bikeways type things. Um, wherever we can find it, would certainly go a long way towards implementing those improvements that the community would like to see. Interestingly enough, the one thing we have found is that if you have a project, you, you know, you, you are telling a much more compelling story than just selling a vision. Correct. So, you know, sometimes you can, you, you can, uh, you know, pretty these, pretty these conceptual things up so they actually look like a project that'll really help us go out and chase those kind of dollars, not just for, for the Green Bay Trail, but for a lot of stuff, you know. So, Chris, the thing about the trail that that's kind of unique is that is that you can really bring these, as Rob's mentioned, these different stakeholders, government bodies, et cetera, together. And, you you know, you can mobilize people when you have these different if you get everyone bought into it. You know, you have a you know, you're you get a lot of cross section of neighbors and so on that can come together for different reasons on this. And so I I mean, I it. it strikes me as sort of a feel good project that that would really be beneficial and that you know we could get done and it would bring some goodwill um across the board and a lot of people use that trail i know i was thinking today you bet for this evening i'm probably on that trail 200 days a year 
you know, and I'm not anything special. There's a lot of people that are down there every single day. And the interesting thing is I see, you know, depending on when I go, go, go down there, mid morning, you'll find one group early in the day, you'll find another group afternoon. Uh, a lot of times the high schools train down there. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of users to that. And it's just one of those assets because it's down in the hall. We don't think about it as much, but I agree. It's time to clean it up and make it something special like everywhere else in town. The other thing is that we're contiguous to part of the trail that's really been um, beautified with Glencoe. I mean, it's, there is quite a contrast when you go from Gwinnett into Glencoe. I mean, they, they've done a really nice job even on the benches and the parks. I mean, it just, it looks, it looks very nice. And ours is kind of, you know. <laughs> I'm looking forward sack. to this conversation a lot. What's, what's that? <laughs> I said, I'm looking forward to this conversation a lot because, because I am. Good. <laughs> Leave Good. It. We got a project on our hands, guys. Good. <laughs> so any other thoughts? That you guys have any other thing that's been nagging at you or up oh, missed you bob what do you think that the i'm sorry uh, chris what do you think that the um logistics or the process for the post office might be i mean it's is it just something that we have to you know sort of start exploring or what's your game yeah plan well i one? i my I would like to bring a vision to the community and to council at one time mm -hmm. to see if, 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 if we have consensus around a, a, a fundamental concept, you know? And then once that's validated, I think that opens up a lot of conversations and a, and a lot of work, but, but, but clearly it's, in, it's important that, that uh, both council and the community at large uh, you know, kind of coalesce around an idea so that that'll create the direction that we can begin to pursue. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, uh, I'm not beating my chest or anything, but, <laughs> you know, I, I, I was on that post office commission that started in what, 05, 06. And I've been thinking about that site for a long, long time. So I, I'm kind of trying to bring some of the things I learned from those conversations to hopefully what I can bring to you guys. And we'll see if, if, if that's something that works in concept. And if it does, then the fun part begins. We can start filling in all the blanks and doing all the, uh, the cool stuff. If not, then we you know, have a conversation about what else might work. So more to come soon. Mm -hmm. So. I'm just hoping the comp plan stays on, 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 on target here. That's probably the biggest thing. And Tina, you're right. That is going to produce a, that is going to produce a to-do list for village council. That's that definitely is going to occupy a couple of years worth of, of policy decisions. So, which will be fun. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, it's sometimes, you know, you can think of the big things, but it's like those little buried things, you know, if you're going to allow rain barrels or, you know, all those policy chain decisions that then have, you know, require so many other decisions as well, and then modifications to the code, which I think will be great, right? Because um, one of the things when you're at the plan commission level, it's very hard to um, implement the current comp plan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right it just really is um and so i think you know um hopefully the document we get is clear kind of focused enough and it doesn't have overlapping standards so it's pretty easy to then implement and i know i talked a lot about it um with them is that you know we need to have it's so once it's adopted it's clear what we need to do um to implement. Yeah, I'm hoping some, some fairly clear cut recommendations come out of that as well. Uh, I know that, that that appendix B thing or whatever it was, was supposed to be that, but it just never achieved that, that functionality. So I'm hoping this one's a little bit more 
clear and directed and, and prescriptive in, in certain ways. So, although we're not gonna be bound by the plan per se anyway, it's, it really is just that, right? It's, it's the guidepost, but uh, uh, with all the work that's being done, I, I think the community will be well represented in it. So, yeah. just like a lot of these discussions, look at it, it's all about just building a vision Having the having everyone in the community share a vision, maybe not you know 100, percent but getting a good portion to share the similar visions, then the then the work becomes easy and becomes really enjoyable too. So I'm hoping that's where we're going to be on a lot of these things uh, as we go through the year, and uh, because the work is hard, you know. I mean, this power plant thing, guys, I'm telling you. We will, we will have special study sessions on this because we just need to really understand technically what all this means before we can even start to talk about it. So, and I had this idea for a Carvana over at uh, uh, <laughs> Winnetka Avenue and Green Bay Road. So <laughs> how about it, Rob? We could use that for uh, some, some reasonable uh, tax revenue, wouldn't you say? Sure. <laughs> Maybe we'll cut it to 12 stories instead. Sure. Maybe put it on the landfill with a solar panel. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's a real that's a for real project. I know, I know. So um Kristen, I know that uh I would uh Elijah like to share anything with us while we're here? Would you please raise your hand, Elisha, if you'd like to speak again? Okay, I'm asking you to unmute, please. Uh, well, I'm, I'm delighted that you're talking about uh, the, the Green Bay Trail. And um, I think that your, your points are all well taken. And uh, Friends of the Green Bay Trail, which is work so far, Justin Glencoe is probably at a point, <clears throat> I can't guarantee it, at which uh, they would work with a coalition of people in Winnetka, both in terms of uh, the experience they bring, um, the expertise in terms of, of uh, uh, habitat and financially, um, uh, not to mention the, the volunteers. So uh, I'm I'm hoping that maybe uh, we can uh, put something together that will um, be something that can be tangible and um, noticeable uh, to the community and uh, not only accepted but welcomed. Well, thanks, Elijah. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, once we start talking about this and this, you know, this whole concept of, of, of who we're going to work with and how we're going to make these decisions is probably one of those things we can talk about regardless of, of what comes out of the comp plan. So, uh, you know, thinking just about what alliances we can build in order to make things happen sooner rather than later. So that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, one of my <clears throat> thoughts is that a lot's going to be done by the Union Pacific, uh, and I understand that we don't have a great, always a great relationship with them. But at Hubbard Woods, where a lot's going to be disturbed, uh, and there's going to be a repositioning of, of the trail, and that might provide an opportunity uh, to, uh, to start to do something uh, with, with the parties involved. <clears throat> I think it also makes sense because it's adjacent to an area that's already been worked on. So you are, you, you're continuing something and not trying to plop something down in the middle. That's particularly true when you're dealing with a plants and invasive species. Uh, the, the more margin you have, the more chance you have for buckthorn to take over and all that sort of stuff. But if you make it contiguous, uh, <clears throat> you reduce that, uh, opportunity for invasion. Yeah, because, you know, that I forgot about that, that UP uh, project that's coming up there, but, but, but from what I'm hearing you say, though, 
Elijah, is that doing some sort of small demonstration project doesn't make a lot of sense because, because of the invasives? Uh, but it depends where you do it, I, I, I think. Uh -huh. But I, I guess I thought a little bit bigger than that, that since, since that area is gonna be uh, torn up, now obviously not all the way up the slope and everything, right? but that would be an opportunity to make a section of, of Hubbard Woods south of Scott Avenue um, <clears throat> rehabilitated and to, to, to show uh, residents, uh, you know, what, what can be done and what can be uh, accomplished. Um, I, uh, we have gotten grants from the Union Pacific before. I don't know whether that, <laughs> whether our relationship is still uh, good in that regard. But uh, um, the point that I'm taking away from your discussion is that once, once you have a plan and something specific, uh, m more than just a vision, um, things might be able to be put together so that you have the money to, to uh, execute it. Um, and um, anyway, that's those are just my thoughts. Um, that, that this that this may present uh, uh, an opportunity to uh, to work on um, a visible part of the trail. The people at the platform will see it. Um, that's a good. Uh, bit. Yeah, and I don't want to minimize uh, from our experience working on the slope. I mean, you you working on the slope is tough. Uh, I mean, you see how the buckthorn loves it, but but that's not a healthy species for for our community, um, and so that'll take that'll take some uh, uh, real work, both in terms of thinking. Uh, and executing, uh, and then you have the the, the drainage issue, um, which you you talked about too. Yeah. Plus, we have to track down which sanitary sewers are still leaking into that ditch as well. So, uh, yeah, we got some work to do down there, Elijah. Uh, and it sounds like this is going to be a study session that we're going to have probably first half of this year, Rob. Just so we can get a, our arms around some of this fundamental <laughs> stuff. And and Elijah, don't get don't misinterpret our relationship with uh, UP. Uh, oh, we hold no grudges. We hold no grudges against them, even though they went out and sold all the properties that they own in, in, in our village and didn't even let us know that they were available for purchase. But we don't hold any grudges about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll figure it out with them. I mean, at the end of the day, they still have to come through well, us. So. Well, I guess the question is if they hold grudges against us. No. Uh, that, that, that may may, uh, may make uh, funds flow a little bit more. That's free. a revolving door over there, so we don't have to worry about that. So, um, okay, well, thanks, Elijah. <clears throat> okay, any, any last comments, closing comments, thoughts, ideas? Right, well, nice and short. I don't know what time it is, but it feels pretty early yet. So that's a good thing. Oh, 7.45, okay. All right, so no other comments. I will just simply ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Second. Okay, Rob, can we, uh, we do a roll call for that? Sure. Trustee Dearborn? Yes. Trustee Dahlman? Yes. Trustee Mancini? Yes. Trustee Kripe? Yes. I hate Zoom. <laughs> One more. See you later, guys. All right. Thanks, bye -bye. guys. Bye-bye.